All right, so if you did watch the part one of this, we basically made a menu here. And in this menu, we had some functions assigned to some items. So for example, there was this one that says show the box. And that runs the function that gives us this prompt. And prompt is something that's going to have this area for somebody to type something in. And then an OK button or some other buttons. I'm not going to talk about prompts in this particular video yet, but that's what we got. So I'm going to go back to my script editor. And again, if you don't know how to get here, tools, script editor, but I suggest you watch the first video at least if you're looking at this so you understand what's going on here. Now that was this, that's the prompt that I've made that show message function that we've assigned to this sub menu right here. Now for me not to have to all the time go here and click on this, I'm going to assign it to the second item here on the list. So I'm just going to assign that show message to this thing that says another one. And I'll just say message as the text for that. So this way I don't have to just keep going through that long menu to access that. So now I'm going to be able to run that by running this message thing. Good. So now I'm going to switch that instead of doing a prompt, which gives us some place to type, I'm going to switch that with an alert. So alert is not going to have some place for the user to type. So I'm going to just do some message something like this, save it. If I go back and rerun this, see, it just gives us hello. So that's by default what you get. Now you might just want a box that just gives you a message like this and use this, but other times you might want to have the user to confirm they want to do something before you actually do it. So for example, I have this my time macro that we've assigned to just put the time in here. Now you might have a message box that pops up to get the user to confirm they actually want to run the macro before you actually run the macro. And usually you would do it for more complicated things compared to this example. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to do this alert box, but then instead of just having an okay thing, you can actually have it to do different buttons. And the way I can get to it, so let's actually just move this to a couple of different lines. So I'm going to do a var UI here to create the UI and then I can do this UI hello thing, which should be the same thing. I need a semicolon here. So now I won't have to type this whole thing all over again to repeat it. I can just get to this UI. So here as a second argument, you can do different button sets that are available. So if I do UI dot and here, see, we have button sets. And if I do dot, those are the options we have. So if we just do okay and save this, if I go back and run that thing, it will just say that message and okay, right? Now, if I change that okay to something different, like okay cancel, now it's gonna give us those buttons like this. And then we can also do something like yes or no. So, or yes, no, and cancel and have all three buttons. I'm gonna do yes, no. And I'm gonna say, are you sure? you want to run this. So that's going to be the message the user is going to get. So now if I go back and just run this so you can see what happens, we get this and it says yes and no. And right now, if you click yes or you click no, nothing is really going to happen, but we got that to at least give us yes and no button set. So now what this alert is giving us, so if I just do this alert thing again, see, it's going to give us back the button. So basically that's going to be the button that was pressed. So I'm going to save that in a variable. I'm going to call it button pressed. 
equals to whatever we get. And now that's going to be that button that was pressed. So if I do logger dot log that button pressed and save this, let's just go and check what's going to happen if we do this. So if I go back and do the message, press yes, let's go check our logs. So see, I get a yes because we clicked yes. Now if I go back and run this again, and do no. If I go and look at the log, we get a no. Good. So that gives us what button was pressed. And that means now we can use it in some sort of if statement. So we can say if that button pressed is equal to, and we're going to check if it's equal to yes. So the yes is coming from this UI again, dot button, because it said it's going to return a button. And let's see what buttons we have. So we want to check if it's the yes one. So I'm going to say if that's yes, then what I want to do, I want to run this other macro right here. So I'm just going to put it right there to run that macro when we press yes. So now if we press yes, we should get that macro to run to put the date in. Otherwise, it's just not going to do anything. So I'm going to go back and do this again, message. So if I press no, nothing happens. Now let's try this again. I do message. This time I press yes. See, it runs the function. Now we got the date right in there. So basically what you can do, you can just get this button pressed and then check which button was it. And if it's that button, just do this thing. Or if it's another button, do something else. So you can do different messages. So you could even do like three buttons instead of two by doing this yes, no cancel. And now if I go back and run this, see, it's going to give me three buttons. Yes, no, and cancel. And then you could check which button it is by doing all kind of like else, else if sort of statement. So I could do else if that button pressed instead of yes, we can say no, then we want to do this other thing. And you can do another else if and do button pressed is cancel to this thing. So you can see we have different options here. And now we can do different things here. Do something if no, which I really have nothing to do with this right now, because most of the time, yes or no is good enough for this stuff. So we'll just say that. And this could be other functions here you could run as well. You can even detect if the button that was pressed was this X, the close button. And that will do another LC here so I can show you how that works. So it's kind of the same thing. I'm going to do close. That's the one. And... Let's just actually do something when we press closed. Let's just do another pop-up box. So I'm going to do UI alert. And we'll just keep this simple. We'll say you closed it. Save this. Go back and run it. So we have this. If I press on close, it's going to give me this other message. You closed it. If I go back and open the message and I click on yes, it's going to run and put the date in there. I'm going to clear that. And if I press no or cancel right now, it does nothing because that's what we have in our code. And that's how you can use alerts and react to something that user clicks on. These are really helpful a lot of times when you do like a button right here in the middle. So with these, when people click here, they are likely to want that to happen, although it's a good idea to have the prompt. 
but with these other buttons, when you do a drawing, so just that's the drawing message, I guess, for me. I'm sure you've seen me creating these buttons many times. So now with this button, if I assign some macro to it, so instead of doing this one, this show message one, let me actually just start with this one, my macro that puts the date in. So you click in this, assign script, do the function, hit okay. So now if I click on this button, it pops up right here. So these are a lot more likely to be clicked accidentally. So this is where it's a good idea to assign this type of stuff to it, like get a confirmation box first before you actually run it. So if you're sending some emails and stuff like that, yeah, you probably don't want that to accidentally be sent. So now if I click on this, it's gonna first give me the prompt. If I click yes, then it's gonna put the date in there. And that should cover alerts in Google Sheets interface. Thanks for watching, please subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.